I'm here at the Australian Museum in Sydney with Colin McGregor, the manager of the Materials Conservation Unit here at the museum, and we're looking through the Douglas Mawson 1911 to 1914 Australasian Antarctic Expedition, that ill-fated and landmark mission to Antarctica. And after 100 years, everything looks to be in pretty good nick. And why is that, Colin? Well, these things are made to withstand the rigours of Antarctic conditions and so they were uh, made from good materials, good wood and uh, they, uh, they survived very well really. Um, these were donated by Sir Douglas Mawson in 1923 after the expedition. Mawson was quite a, an innovator and he realised the potential of taking aircraft to Antarctica to explore large areas. Um, but unfortunately they had a crash in Adelaide during a test flight um, just before the expedition but he decided to take the remains of the aircraft without the wings down there and try to use it as an air tractor. And they actually did use it for hauling sledges and supplies. OK, so it, it really did help him move along. Oh, yes. I think until the engine overheated finally and seized up and then they couldn't use it anymore and it was abandoned in Antarctica, apart from a few bits that were bought, brought back, fortunately, for posterity and we ended up with the, the propeller. So... Uh what do we have here? It looks handmade. Yes, this is called a sun compass and they made quite a number of those down in Antarctica um, before they went on the sledging journeys and it's used as a simple sundial. Um, they were tied onto the sledges and they found that um, because of the variations in the magnetic fields um, around Antarctica it's much more reliable to take sun sightings than to, to use a magnetic compass. Um, so they're quite crude, but uh, apparently they were really essential um, when you're out there um, on a, a long stage journey. Beats uh, current technology, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, anything that works I mean, in those conditions, and it's totally reliable. There's nothing much to go wrong, because it's just a piece of wood and um, basically a nail through the middle, and you, you, get, you cast a shadow onto it. I'm presuming that you had to also use a magnetic uh, reading to uh, align the compass in the correct way um, and then do your calculations from that of the, with an accurate um, time. And of course, having a good watch <laughs> with you <laughs> would be essential to make sure you knew what time of day it was and then you take a, the, sun, um, the sun sighting to calculate your position. So this is Douglas Mawson's ice pick. Yes, it actually is his personal pick and apparently they use the same pick throughout the expedition. This has actually been inscribed with Dr. Mawson on the, uh, the blade. Um, it's also got the Swiss Maker's Mark made in Switzerland, so very good quality equipment. And we can surmise that this would have been the one he actually had with him on his epic survival journey when he, was, uh, he fell into the crevasse um, after his two companions had died and he was trying to make it back to the, the base camp. Um, you can see also that it's been repaired at some point with this copper binding. It means the shaft must have started to crack and it's been reinforced with uh, copper wire wrapped around it. Uh, could you possibly put a value on something like this artefact? <laughs> yes, no, very hard to. I mean, it's, it's got an iconic importance really um, because of the history attached to it. And uh, who knows what it would go for in, in, in the marketplace if it was ever auctioned. <laughs> But it certainly looks like something that could be used right now in a, an ice field. Uh, yes, I mean, I think I'd probably trust it to, to do the job if I had to. <laughs> and uh, I suppose it must have been very difficult for him to part with this. I mean, this, this is very personal. Yes, that's quite, it's quite surprising. Amongst all the objects that have been donated from the expedition at that time, you would have thought this might be the one kind of thing you'd hang on to for sentimental reasons. What does a museum think about this? I mean, I know what you're saying, you can't put a, a monetary value on it, but in regards to all the Mawson uh, objects you have, what do you think about this pick? Um, I think this is the most personal one. This is one that you can see that has a, the greatest personal connection um, and has a touch of the, the epic story very much attached to it.